Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to continue talking about just how cool layer groups can be. Now, in the last two examples, I was talking about layer masks, as in, isn't it nice that we can hide things behind these foreground trees? And I also talked about overlays. Now, both of those suffered from one big caveat, which is that they are what I'm going to call positional, as in when I wanted to add something else to the foreground, like a new tree, well, then I had to change the layer mask to kind of update the rules. And likewise, when I wanted to do an overlay, if I were to move one of the spheres, the overlay didn't move with it. Well, today's topic are adjustment layers, and adjustment layers don't need to be positional, and this is so powerful. So let's say what I want to do to these spheres is to try out a different color. I don't know, maybe I want to make them red. A great way to do that would be an adjustment layer. So I could do curves, but I think I'm actually going to do gradient map. So I'm going to do gradient map just on top of the entire image. Right now it made the whole thing grayscale. I'm going to pick some different colors. So I've got my gradient map, but obviously it's applied to too much of the image. I only want it to apply to the spheres. Now, just like before, I convert it to be a clipping mask. And now you can see it's only affecting these layer group items. But look how cool this is. It also affects that reflection. Now, how'd that happen? Well, what I did was I just duplicated one of these. And then to give it a reflection, I just kind of pulled one down, did a bit of a blur, and then erased what I didn't need. Okay, so I, I could even erase a little bit of that bottom. So there we have a reflection. And it matches the color because this gradient map is applied to everything in that group. But what if I wanted them to be orange instead of red? Well, I can change that in one spot. So here I'll change this to be a little more orangey. Say OK. The reflections update, the spheres update. It's all controlled by this one adjustment layer. It's totally non-positional. I could move these wherever I want in the entire image and they're still affected by it. And since there's still a group mask on here, the foreground stays foreground. This has nothing to do with traditional painting, but it is so powerful. Now there's definitely times where you want to tweak the rules a little bit. Like for instance, these are too uniform. If I wanted them to you know, fit into the scene better, they would be less vibrant as they went further away from me. Well, that's easy to do too. Adjustment layers can have their own masks. So let me paint with a airbrush here, and I'm going to use like a gray color because I don't want it to go away completely. That would be black, but I do want to diminish the effect. So here I'm just going to paint over these further away ones. And if I've gone too much, I can switch my color to white and I can bring it back. So here I'm just hiding and revealing the effect of that mask. Still just one adjustment layer that's changing their color. And you can use this same general principle in a lot of different ways. Let's say I wanted to have reflected light bouncing back up on the bottoms of all these. So for that, I'm actually going to make a green vector shape. And I know this is going to seem odd at first, but here we go. So it's green hard to look at. Then I'm going to make it a clipping mask. So now it's only affecting these items of the group. And then I think I'll switch the blending mode to something like color. Okay, that's a little bit better. So now it hasn't changed the value, it's only changed the color. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask it all away. Remember how painting with black and white hides and reveals that effect? Well, I'm going to make a mask and just paint bucket fill it with black. So this means it's still there, it's just hidden on all the pixels. Well, now I can paint with white and start to bring it back selectively. So here, I'll start with this one right here. I'm bringing it back with white. And then I can switch to black and hide it away again. And you'll notice it's still only over top of this layer group, but I'm not carefully painting inside the lines. That's because it's a clipping mask. So here I'm sort of using a couple different masking techniques together to have total control. So I'm just switching between black and white painting in the mask. So a fair question would be, well, 
that's cool and all, but why did you start with a vector layer? You could have just done a paint bucket fill and it would have had the same result. Well, in the spirit of this being very flexible and very powerful, the neat thing about a vector layer is I can just double click on the vector shape and change its color. So we'll say I didn't want it to be green, I want it to be blue. Now all of those bounced light are blue. And I can change it again. It's just a live relationship more than it is brush strokes. And I could change that yellow just by changing this gradient map. So maybe I want to make them like a, a blue color and I want the bottom glow to be a combination of the blue and the green. So like a halfway between the two. There we go. That was a radical change, but it was just one adjustment layer and one layer set to the color mode, both of which are being clipped onto a layer group. So I hope it's clear how awesome and powerful this is, but I recognize it's a little abstract. So I encourage you to watch this video a couple times and follow the steps. I've even included this file as a download below the post so you can give it a try yourself. But layer groups are extremely powerful. And I hope you can start to agree why I think so. Thanks for coming to the site, and I'll see you in the next video.